question comes from NY Canada, right? What advice would you give to someone who's going to use an online matrimonial service? Where's Abdul Kobe at tonight? <laughs> we need him here for this question. At the end of the day, um, I would say humbly, and most importantly, realistically, like keeping it real, being honest, all right? As we said before, many people, they demonize these sites. Muslima, Kiran, this, that, beautifulzoja.com. <laughs> Um, who's Muzmatch? Whatever name they have, right? Whatever name they have, huh? Beautifulzoja.com. Huh? Don't Google it when you leave the masjid, <laughs> Huh? Only Allah knows. Secondwife.com. Allah <laughs> must At the end of the day, uh, many people, they talk about these websites. They say these websites are nasty. They're dirty. They're women on there showing their faces, showing their bodies. They're men acting like they're women. There are dogs and wolves and coyotes on there looking for quick meat. So there's people, they say this. It's haram, it's this and it's that. Say it. Say it. Maybe. Can't deny the fact that there are a lot of people out there on those sites looking for scams. Send me money. Uh, I, I want to send you my pictures, but my phone is broken, so send me money and I'll, I'll get a new phone. Huh? Or I don't have Skype on this computer. Send me money and I'll, I'll Skype you. Huh? All types of things. All right? This is reality. Say it. Okay, people on there playing around, and as it clearly says, it's a dating service. They told you from day one that the thing was a what? <laughs> dating. You wanted to translate dating into what? Sunnah Zawaj. <laughs> well, whose fault is that? I don't understand this. So, with all that being said, why have these sites gained popularity and notoriety? Why have these sites become so viral? Why are so many people on those sites except because the original orthodox conventional way of marriage has failed? It's failed. The people are stuck in jahiliyyah. You can't marry no one who's older than you or younger than you or who's lighter than you or darker than you or taller than you or bigger than you or heavier than you. You can't marry no one from another country. You can't marry no one from this border. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. He has to be a doctor. He has to memorize Sayyid Bukhari. He has to have a million dollars in his bank account. He has to, he has to, he has to. All of these different things have blocked a lot of people from getting married. And people become frustrated. And they become, uh, they've lost hope. They've despaired. Yani? So they result to that which will work for them. So instead of talking about the websites and how bad they are, how about you reevaluate yourself as a father? How is it possible for a man to have three and four daughters in his house? How is that even healthy? Islamically and mentally, you have a grown woman sleeping, eating, washing up in your house. Two, three grown women. Is that even proper Islamically? The hadith of the Prophet Man ala jariyataini hatta tablugha. Hadith Anas radiallahu anhu. He who raises two girls until they're of age will be like this with me in paradise. The hadith says until they what? Of age. Meaning you're supposed to take care of the girls until they're what? After that, kalas. They're not supposed to be under your guardianship. They're supposed to be married off with someone else looking after them. Everyone understand this? So where does this concept come from of no one can marry my daughter, no one's good enough for my daughter, no one's worthy of my daughter, and then what type of problems ensue and happen when you have all of those girls living in a house with their brothers and they're grown women and grown men. They're no longer boys and girls anymore. Curiosity and fahisha and shaitan. Then there's incest and there's molestation and rape and all types of fahisha that takes place. Because that is not the natural Islamic system. That's not the what? Natural Islamic system. Your daughter is 25 years old, 30 years old. Your son is 19, 20. Why is he not married yet? What are you waiting for for them to get married? What, what, what's holding you up? Your son is a grown man. And he goes to work, goes to school, goes to the gym, comes home, and he has no wife. He's not looking for a wife. He's not attempting. He's just living. Something is what? Oftentimes what? Wrong. Something is oftentimes wrong. So oftentimes the parents are at fault. Sometimes the children are at fault, but we're talking about the parents right now. Our arrows right now are what? Are aimed on the parents. That's the only people we're shooting at right now. The parents. And also the imams and the leaders and the scholars of the, of the communities who talk about the websites, but they themselves don't put effort to marry off their children. They don't give a khutbah about jahiliyyah. 
oh, we're not saying that they can't get married because it's a different race, but, you know, maybe. And it, no, that's not true. The only reason why you're not letting your daughter marry this one or marry your son marry his daughter is because of what? Because of race. Keep it real. Keep it 100. Let's be honest. You don't want no mixed baby. You don't want no mixed grandchildren. You, don't, you can't stand the sight of this brother from wherever he comes from marrying your tender, precious daughter. That's the bottom line. So therefore, your daughter, she has sexual desires. She's lonely. She wants to be with someone. She wants to be taken care of. She wants to be loved. She wants to go to a conference. She wants to be a Muslim wife. She's going to go somewhere else and find that. But the sight is evil, and it's haram, and it's kether and kether. But your system is what? Sunnah? Your system of marrying your daughter, is, that's, that's the right way, right? So oftentimes, we're struck by hypocrisy. And by we just are afraid to look in the mirror and blame ourselves for failing. The system is perfect, but we who use the system are utterly imperfect. So before we even start dogging out the websites, we need to dog out ourselves. Everyone understand this? And evaluate ourselves. What have I done for my son to get married? Have I taught him how to be a man? Have I instilled in him honor, responsibility from day one? Have I taught my son how to save money, to have a driver's license, to have an apartment, to this? To, have I given him these skills of life? Or is he just a loser? And a bum who plays video games all day, and that's it. A couch potato. My daughter, she can't cook an egg. She can't make a pot of instant coffee. She doesn't know anything about treating a husband or serving a husband or being an obedient wife. Whose fault is that? Hers or mine's? It's my fault. Are you understand this? So that's my first thing. That, the first thing that I want to say with regards to these websites is for us to cut the crap and stop being hypocritical and dogging the websites. But not looking at what? As people. And marrying and making sure that our young Muslim sons and daughters do what? Get married. And making it available for the people to do what? To get married. In a proper sunnah way. That's first and foremost. Secondly is, if you can't do it the normal way, because it's best to do it the normal way without going online. It's best. But if you can't find, and it's very difficult, and you're very frustrated, go on those sites seeking Allah's help. And seeking the law's refuge, the law's protection, and make sure that you have a clear-cut agenda. A clear-cut agenda. And don't be on that website just floating around. I'm looking for a sister. I'm looking for a brother. Or he's cute. Or she's, she's pretty. Or she's got a nice body. Or this or that. You got to have an agenda. I'm looking for a wife of this age, of this build, of this nationality, of kether, 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 kether. These are the musts, and other than that, I have the things that I, I'm flexible with. She can't be older than this age, but if she's shorter than that, no problem. She can't have children, but if she's of this age, no problem. Why can that? You have the things, your arkan, that have to be there. Arkan on Islam, right? Things that what? Must be there. Your pillars of iman, that what? Must be there. Then you have the other things which are what? Recommended. I'll, I'm willing to forsake this if the sister has what? That. She's very, very, very knowledgeable and pious, and she's not the most beautiful. I'll marry her. Are you understanding this? She looks for a husband. He's financially stable, but he's not the most attractive man. I'd rather have a husband that's financially stable. Why? Well, you got to have an agenda, and you have to have the responsibility of going in and going out. Like the souk. You don't just go around a souk and just hang out all day and go from store to store and just hop from store to store, and you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner in the marketplace. We're going in there to what? Cop this. It's about this, if they have a better price, kada, kada, and that's it. We're out. We're not just lingering around. So many people, they go on Muslim or they go on these other websites and they linger. They don't have an agenda. They're not serious. They play games. Another very important piece of advice is to have sabr. You got to have patience. Don't think you're just going to find your uh, knight in shining armor from one month of subscription. <laughs> I don't understand this. It may take you some time to find a good brother. It may take you some time to find a suitable sister. How much patience do you what? Do you have? Last but not least is, don't be fooled by your desires. She's very beautiful. She's very pretty. But what type of wife do you think you're getting who has her hair out and a fitting shirt for everybody to see in public? What type of religion do you think she has? She's going to magically put on a hijab and niqab and abaya as soon as she marries you with a big beard. And you think that's going to work? Or you have a brother on there and he has some type of crazy muscle shirt, huh? Some tight pants. 
You think he's going to be your sunnah, salafi, knight in shining armor? As soon as you marry him and straighten him out, well, however you're going to straighten you think Many people, they think like this. And they're fools. You get married, and the sister, she leaves the house with the lipstick on, or the tight kima, or the tight ibaya, and she says, I was never that religious. And you what? You knew that. You married me because of my beauty. So I don't feel like covering my face. Or don't get upset if I smoke a cigarette with my niqab flipped up. You knew I liked what? Smoking what? <laughs> Marbles. <laughs> a poor time. You told me that it was haram, but I still like what? <laughs> Smoking cigarettes. Well, how can that? In any other example, you must find compatibility from day one, but do not be too picky. Don't be what? Don't be too picky. Because if you had a thousand options and choices, then you wouldn't what? You wouldn't be on Piran.com. Are we going to understand this? So these are some basic principles. And perhaps a lecture needs to be done just on the fiqh of, of Muslim matrimonials. No doubt. It's long overdue. Because this is why we need Abdul Qawbi here. The brothers, they act pious and righteous, but in reality, they what? They have two or three different accounts on Muslima with different names and locations and different profile pics. Abu Abdullah, Abdullah, Abu Abdurrahman. It's all one what? One brother. I don't understand this. This is a reality. <laughs> this is a what? This is a reality, unfortunately. So uh, these are some basic general principles. Last but not least, the ruling of showing your face. Is it permissible to show your face or not? That's a long discussion in itself. Just be careful. Use discretion. Seek Allah's help. And most importantly, have an agenda. And you got to be mature. You have to be there for a purpose and for a reason. And not just to get girls or get guys, right? With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all success.